Hello and welcome to a Cool Scratch Tutorials video. Today we are going to be going over a very simple way to create yourself a maze inside a scratch. We are going to be going over a movement script as well as a maze script. There will be different levels and a way to go from one level to another level. So let's just get into it. So let's just create our first project. And let's, we see Scratch Cat here, let's delete him. Let's go into our backdrop section. And once we go into our backdrop section, let's go to backdrops and let's create three different backdrops. <clears throat> so now we have three different Blake backdrops. Convert them all to bitmap. And we're just going to make the levels. So I'm just gonna zoom in a bit so I can see it better. And I'm going to make the maze red. So I'm just going to get a red I like, such as that. And a very important thing we want to do is create barriers inside of our maze. So I'm going to create my line width to 20 right here. And I'm going to make these edge barriers so our sprite won't be able to get out of the map. Now we want to do this on every single one of our backdrops. Do a line there. So we have our first backdrop, we have our second backdrop, and let me just finish our third backdrop really quickly. So now that we have all three of our backdrops with a red outline, we want to create the maze itself. I'm going to make my maze get progressively harder and harder, and we always want it to start up here, so do not put any lines there. So maybe I will make one line here, I think the line's a little thick. So I'm just gonna press undo and make it size 10. So let's have our, our sprite start off here and maybe he'll have to get through these sort of obstacles. I will make it so he has two ways to go and one will lead to a dead end of course <clears throat> and one will be the right way. I will always make him end over here, so we'll just keep on creating lines for him. And the main point of this maze is if they touch the edge, then they basically die and have to restart. So I'm just going to keep on going. The first level is probably going to be pretty easy, so that's what I'm doing. Creating many different pathways for him. I'm going to make our paths connect probably up here. Maybe make one dead end right here for them to get past. So just go like that and they're going to meet up here. Going to make this path go up. So they will be forced to either go up or go to this way. The right way is going to be this direction. So I'm gonna just section off this part and maybe make this go into a dead end. Let's make it seem like it is going to finish right, but it's not and it's gonna end here and he's gonna be trapped. So let's make this go down. And then let's make it funnel down to right here, which is where we end our maze. So this is the first level complete. And you basically just want to continuously draw a line from this top corner 
down to this bottom corner and I'm going to do it for three different levels and I will see you back here once I finish that. the second layer I've made it so they have to go through diagonals and this one way is a dead end but this way is the right way and I'm gonna complete the third level So I've completed the third layer, the third level I mean, and it's going to be pretty difficult because there's lots of diagonals and it gets sort of narrow here. This is a dead end and you to go through right here and then of course end down here. So I'm going to go back to the first one. This is my first, this is my second, this is my third. Of course you can add more levels but in this video we're just going to be adding three levels. So now that we have our backdrops, we want to create our character itself that moves through all the levels. So I'm just going to convert it to bitmap and maybe make a smiley face, of course. I'm going to make a yellow, let's make a yellow circle, and then let's give him one big smiling face. And there he is. I think he's a bit big, so I'm going to set his size down maybe to 50% of what it is. Actually, maybe 60. Once we've created our character, what we want to do is create a movement script. So let's go to when green flag clicked, and then drag in a forever loop on the bottom of it. Let's get one if-then statement and just drag it to the place. Don't put it inside the forever loop yet. And then let's go to sensing, and then drag in the key blank pressed. Let's make one that's up arrow and let's duplicate this script four times. So we have four of them. One up arrow to make one down arrow, one right arrow, and one left arrow. Now that we have this here, let's drag in two change x by blocks and two change y by blocks. Make one of the x's four make another of the x's negative 4, one of the y's 4, and one of the negative y's 4. I mean one of the y's negative 4. So let's drag in our positive change x by to the right arrow, so we'll move to the right 4. For our left arrow, change x by negative 4, so we'll move to the left 4 when we press the uh, left arrow. For the up arrow, we are going to change y by 4, so we'll move it up 4, and with the down arrow, negative for y. Now that we have this, let's just drag it into our forever loop. You can see when we press the green flag, our character will keep on moving and we can hold our right and left arrow and it will move it to at the same time, which is pretty cool. So we have our movement script down, but we want him to actually start completing the mazes. For all our mazes, it starts off in the top left corner and we can see our x position is x negative 213 and y 138. So we can see it's already in our go to block and let's drag it right above the forever loop. So if I move him here basically and we press the green flag, he will always end up there at the beginning. So I just moved him a bit and he'll end up at the same spot. Let's set our backdrop to our first level. We can see he still ends up in the same spot, which is pretty cool. Now we've done that, we want to set up a code for when he touches the edges, he'll go back to where he started. So in this forever loop, we want to get a control block and drag in one more if statement. We want to drag inside of that if statement if, let's go to sensing, touching, color. 
you see it's set to aqua, but we can drag the sampling tool and make it so whenever it touches red, it, can, it will sense that. And we can see we want it to go to the beginning. So let's just drag in our go to negative 213Y138 that we had in the beginning and just put it down where the touching color red is. So if we press the green flag and we move and if we touch the red, then we'll just be teleported back to the beginning. So I'm trying to complete it here. Oh, and I touched the red and we got teleported back. Perfect. Now that we've got our main character setup sort of set up, what we want to do is create a portal. A portal that will make it so we can transfer from one level to the another, another. Let's go to Paint Sprite. I'm going to convert this to bitmap and maybe make a pretty simple portal. I think I'm going to make it this part. Oh, oops. Make it a circle. It's going to be a dark blue. And then maybe on top of that, a light blue. I'm not sure I'm going to put a dark blue on the top. That sort of looks like a portal. I'm just going to drag it down here for now. And now that we've created the costume of it, let's go to our code section. And we can see that we always want it to be here at this position, x190, y negative 130. So I'm just going to drag it in and then get a green flag clicked block and it will always end up there. So we want to create a forever loop whenever our main character is touching our portal. Then it wants to broadcast a message telling our backdrop here to switch. So to do that, what we want to do is get a forever loop and one if then statement inside of the forever loop. If, and then we want to drag in a touching block and scroll down to sprite one, which is our main character. So it will always be sensing if it is touching that and we will want it to broadcast a message, but how will it know what backdrop it's on? Let's say if it's on level two, it might accidentally send it to backdrop one. To prevent that, we want to get in one and statement. And so if it's touching sprite one and, we want to go to our look section and we want to go to our backdrop number. So. If we click on our backdrops, we can see this is backdrop number one. Let's go back to our portal. So if it's touching that block and the backdrop number is one, so let's get one equal sign. If backdrop number equals one and put that in that script, it will make it change to level two. Let's just duplicate this touching backdrop and let's change this number to two and this one to three. So if it's touching backdrop, if it's touching our sprite and it's backdrop one, then it will change it to two. But to do that, we need to broadcast messages. So let's go down to where we see our messages, which is right here in events. And we want to broadcast messages one. Let's just drag these all in. And then this will be message one. We're going to create a new message and I'll call this message two and this third one message three. So it will broadcast that message depending on which backdrop number it's on. So if we go into our backdrops in Sprite, we want to drag in three of when I receive message one. So basically it will be our portal will tell our backdrop when to switch. So if we receive message one, we want to switch backdrop to our second level. If we receive message two, let's be sure to change that. We want to set it to our third backdrop. The only thing we're missing though is a final screen backdrop. So let's go to our backdrop. Let's go to paint new sprite, convert to bitmap. I'm going to just make a very nice congratulations screen. Maybe make green center it and then let's get the text I'm going to make it black text i'm gonna write congratulations you finished and maybe put a happy face let's put it somewhat in the middle 
make it a bit bigger. This is just so we know when we finished. So if we receive message three, which is basically you've completed it all, we want to switch our backdrop to four. Notice how we don't have one switching back to backdrop one, but when we click the green flag, we want to switch our backdrop to backdrop one. So we click it, go to the first level. Let's just pretend I got it and we'll go down. We can see that it was still touching it and it just went all the way. We could see all the levels flash. What we want to do for that not to happen, we want to broadcast message one and then we are going to want to make a mess, another message, which will send our sprite back to the beginning so we can prevent that. So we got a new message and we'll say start again. So we just want to create three different copies of this and just put them each in every single one of our broadcast section. So now if we go to sprite one and let's say when I receive start again, we want to go to our go to area and let's type in negative 213. We can see up here, that's where we always started. Positive 138. So, oh, oops. We start again. Let's say we completed it. That, and then we'll move down. It'll bring us to level two. So, let's complete this. Oh, I failed, but I'm just going to drag it here for demonstration purposes. And if we go down here, we can see we're on the third level. Let's say I finished the third level and we go down and it has the congratulation symbol. Perfect. So we basically completed our obstacle course slash maze very, very quickly with very simple code. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you learned something new or the code, you really liked it, be sure to leave a like and maybe even subscribe. Thank you and I'll catch you in the next video.